Hello, this is Chuck Ridgway, Automation Technology Manager at Horner. Thanks for joining us for another Tuesday live stream. Well, today is our third straight week focusing on IEC languages. Now at Horner, we pride ourselves in offering our customers lots of options when it comes to logic languages. A lot of our customers still prefer advanced ladder, uh, but a growing number are attracted to IEC. And for the third straight week, we're talking about IEC. And specifically, here's our topic for today. String handling in enhanced IEC. Now, everything we've covered for the previous two weeks applies to standard IEC or enhanced IEC. But today, we're going to talk about what makes enhanced IEC different what are some of the extra string handling capabilities that are available and a variety of other related topics. All right, so without hesitation, let's take a look at how we're gonna break down today's topic. Okay, so we're gonna start by doing a quick comparison between standard IEC and enhanced IEC. What additional functions and capabilities does enhanced IEC offer versus our standard IEC? And what are the requirements that you must meet in order to use enhanced IEC? And then we'll spend a minute or two on string handling. What is it specifically and where is it used? And a bulk of our time today will be spent on the exclusive capabilities you'll find in enhanced IEC, the extra capabilities, if you will, for dealing with strings. And there'll be plenty of demonstrations throughout. All right, let's dive right in. Okay, so first let's start by comparing standard IEC versus enhanced IEC. Now, standard IEC has been available for many years. It's compatible with all Horner controllers and it's available in the standard Seascape that we've all used for many years, okay? There are a couple limitations, although they're not that significant. You are limited to 10,000 variables when you're using standard IEC, which really isn't much of a limitation for most. And there's a very slight scan rate penalty for using standard IEC versus advanced ladder, but we're talking just a few percentages of difference. Most people won't really notice it. Now, from a user base standpoint, advanced ladder is still our most popular logic language available in Seascape, but IEC languages are growing quickly, and that's why we focus quite a bit on it on the channel, because we've got lots of new customers that are choosing IEC 1131, primarily because it offers the capability of using multiple languages, especially structured text. So I would say of the five available IEC languages, ladder and structured text are the two most popular, but you also have other options as well that are especially useful in certain aspects of machine control. Now let's talk about enhanced IEC. Why would you want to use enhanced IEC? What are the requirements to use it? And what does it offer up and above or over and above what you can get with standard IEC? Again, it's still available in your standard Seascape, so you don't need a special version of Seascape or anything. It's been available for some time now, ever since Seascape 9.9 .9 Service Pack 4. I think we're currently on Service Pack 11, so it's been a few years now. Now it's compatible with a lot of our products, but not all of them. The biggest exception is the micro OCS. The micro OCS can use standard IEC, but it's not eligible to be used with enhanced IEC. The other products that don't support enhanced IEC primarily are, I believe the XLE and XLT. Those are the biggest exceptions, if you will. Now in terms of the other requirement, you have to pay a one-time upgrade fee for your OCS to support enhanced IEC. And it's very inexpensive, but it is $50 per unit to utilize the enhanced IEC capabilities on a unit by unit basis. Again, not a subscription, just a one-time upgrade. Now, in terms of the size of the projects it supports, it can support you know, more than five times as many variables. So 64,000 variables versus 10,000. And there is no performance penalty versus advanced ladder. So it has the same execution rate or the same scan rate as advanced ladder. Now, some of the other enhancements, you would have to judge for yourself how significant they are to you, but online programming is something you get with enhanced IEC, you don't get with standard IEC. Now we've supported online programming in most of our products with advanced ladder for some time, but standard IEC does not support online programming. For those of you who aren't familiar, online programming is the ability, if you choose, to make logic changes in your controller without stopping the controller. 
simulation is available in enhanced IEC. Now it's not available in any of our other logic platforms. So simulation is unique to enhanced IEC. And then there are additional instructions and additional data types available in enhanced IEC. And that's primarily what we're gonna talk about today. And that is the string data type and a lot of the extra string instructions that are embedded in the native command set for enhanced IEC that are not available in standard IEC or in advanced ladder. Now let's talk about string handling for a minute. What is string handling? Well, basically it's just simply the manipulation of string type variables, okay? And string type variables are based on ASCII encoding where each character in a string is represented by a byte value or a short integer value, which varies from zero to 127. So based on that value, that matches up with a specific character, whether printable or not, in the ASCII command set. Now, the standard IEC editor, which we've covered for the past couple of weeks, it handles strings as unsigned short integer arrays. Whereas in the enhanced IEC editor, you not only can handle strings as arrays, but you can also handle them using the string data type. And with that string data type comes a lot of extra instructions. Now, some of you may be wondering, why do I even care about string handling in 2024? Well, there's plenty of applications where it's still a major aspect of the control, whether you're talking about barcodes or RFID tags, magnetic card readers, maybe printing to serial or USB based printers for receipts even satellite communication. So there's still plenty of applications where dealing with strings is a required part of the application. Now let's dive into the string functionality that's available in Enhanced IEC. Now, if you expand from the project toolbox in Seascape, if you expand all the different instructions that are available in the string category, you'll see they wrap around to the point where I had to put them side by side to get them all on the string, on the screen, I, that is. Now I have also kind of categorized these by what these different functions are useful for. So some are great for converting strings back and forth between the string format and the array format, because sometimes it is helpful to deal with a string as an array because it's easier to step through character by character and examine an individual character and maybe you know, deal with it individually. So there are times when even though the string data type is available, you may want to convert to an array and vice versa. Also string parsing, which is something we've covered a lot on this channel in regards to advanced ladder and standard IEC because string parsing is a very critical part of string handling. That is effectively extracting a portion of an overall string to get a piece of data and to deal with a piece of data that you're interested in. Also, one thing that's great about enhanced IEC is you've got some string editing functions that are not always available with the other languages, specifically the ability to delete individual characters, uh, insert individual characters and replace individual characters. So that's unique to enhanced IEC. Just like in the other languages, there's some string building functions, okay? For things like concatenating strings together, or just building up a string that maybe you're gonna send out to an automation device or you're gonna send out to a serial printer, for instance. And then there's other functions as well for things like finding the lengths of strings, just finding you know a series of characters within a larger string, those sorts of things. So there's lots of different functionality that's included in the enhanced IEC instruction set some of which is included in the other languages, but not all of it. And one thing I also wanna mention, and that is this, today we're gonna to focus on the syntax for structured text, but all of these functions are available in structured text, function block diagram, and ladder. So you're gonna find a lot of these functions available in multiple IEC languages. We're just gonna cover specifically structured text form today. Okay, now the functions that are exclusive to enhanced IEC, I've got highlighted here on the list. And these are the ones we're gonna focus on today because they're only available in enhanced IEC. All right, let's start diving right in. All right, now the first category, I guess you can call it that I'm gonna talk about are string conversion functions. And this is where you're gonna take a variable that maybe is in the string format and convert it to an array or vice versa. Because as I mentioned a minute ago, there are situations where dealing with a string as an array is easier depending on what you're trying to do 
There's other situations where dealing with a string as a string format is advantageous. So the ability to take the same piece of data and switch it back and forth between these two formats is very valuable. Now, one thing to mention, unlike the way that it's handled in standard IEC, where standard IEC handles strings as unsigned short integer arrays, with enhanced IEC, when it's handled as an array, it is a short integer array. So slight difference there. Don't let that trip you up in your coding. Let's take a quick look at Seascape now. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go through the syntax for these functions, show you how they're used, and then we're going to show off the simulation capability that's available in Enhanced IEC because I don't technically even need to be connected to an OCS to test these out necessarily. Now, I happen to be connected to an OCS, but when I go into simulation mode, it's strictly going to be done on the computer from a simulation standpoint. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at my first string conversion functions. All right, so the first function I'm going to show you is called array to string. And with array to string, and I've got the pop-up for the syntax to show, we have two inputs. The first input is a source array, okay, that we're going to use as the source of our conversion. That is a signed integer array of characters. And then the next input is the name of the string variable that we're going to be creating or writing those characters to. And then finally, there's a double integer that's the third input, which specifies how many characters we want to copy from the array starting at the beginning over to the string variable. And in this case, I put a constant of 10, all right? If I put a variable in there, it would have to be a double integer. And then the output of the function is basically the number of characters that were actually moved. That's basically the output in this particular function. Okay, so that is converting from an array to a string. Now, if we wanna convert the other way around from a string to an array, again, the first input is going to be the string. That's the source of where the characters are coming from. The second input is the name of the short integer array, which is where we're going to copy the characters to. And then again, the output is going to represent how many characters were moved. Okay, let me go ahead and turn on simulation now so we can do some debugging right from the code itself. That can be pretty useful. All right, let me go back to my string conversion area here. Okay, so my source string, okay, is being written to from my source integer array, short integer array, and here's the result. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J is the string that's been written to, or the contents of this string variable that's been copied over from the first 10 characters of this array, all right? And then to demonstrate moving the other way around, I'm showing that if we start out with this string, okay, and we specify a different destination array. Again, it's an, uh, it's an array of short integers. And then it's going to give us an output that shows us that, okay, 10 characters removed. Because a subtle difference here is when you're going from an array to a string, you specify how many characters to move. When you go from a string to array, it tells you how many characters were moved because you always move the entire thing. Okay, so those are a couple of very useful functions, string conversion functions, for converting between the string form and the array form for a variable. All right, now the next two conversion functions I wanna talk about are a little bit unique, but they can be highly useful. And that is converting from ASCII to hex and hex to ASCII. Now, why in the world would you want to do that? Well, let's imagine that we're communicating with an automation device that is sending us data in string form, okay? So we're getting a string coming in maybe over TCP, maybe over serial port or something, all right? Well, maybe that string represents a hexadecimal data value, and we want to process that hexadecimal data value as a number, but it's coming in as a string. So how do we take that hexadecimal representation of a number and turn it into an actual number? Or if we're sending data back to that same device and we need to follow the same format, how do we take an actual number and convert it into a string that is the hex representation? of that number. Well, we use these ASCII to hex and hex to ASCII functions. All right, so back to Seascape we go. We're still in simulation mode. I'll go ahead and turn off simulation mode for a minute so we can review these specific functions. And our ASCII to hex function basically has strictly one input, and that is the string, which we're going to interpret as a hex value. 
And then we're going to take that hex value we're reading in and we're going to convert it to a double integer. So as an example, let's say the data coming in is A0 as a string but that represents a hexadecimal value of a zero, and we wanna take that and convert it to a number. Well, we can use this function for that, and our string is the input, and the value in decimal is what the output of this function is. And then to go in reverse, our function block basically is the input is the data value we wanna send out as a hex string, and the output is the string that we've created. Okay, so going back to simulation mode, we have the ability to see this in action, Again, let's go back to our string conversion routine here. And you can see that the string that we have as our input to our ASCII to hex conversion is coming in as A0. And A0 in hex is 160 in decimal. And so our output is a double integer of 160. And then when we go in the reverse direction, if 160 is our input as a double integer, then our output is gonna be the string of A0. So I just kept those values the same there to kind of illustrate that. Okay, so that is the last two conversion functions I wanted to show you, which are dealing with uh, taking strings and converting them or interpreting them as a hex value and vice versa. Okay, so now back to our content and let's take a look at the string parsing functions that are native to enhanced IEC. Now we've created user-defined function blocks in both advanced ladder, variable-based advanced ladder, and standard IEC that are available for download from our website that kind of emulate these functions, but they're native with enhanced IEC. And so these are parsing functions that you can use to extract a series of characters from either the left side of a string or the beginning, the right side of a string or the end, or somewhere in the middle of a string. Okay, that's what they're useful for. And these are extensively used, again, when you're doing the parsing of a particular string that you received because you want to extract a certain piece of data. Okay, so back to Seascape to see these in action. Let's go to our string parsing section of code here. And here what I've got is some code that's you know showing a source string that I've just fixed at a constant here. And then I'm demonstrating the string left, string right, and string mid functions. Now with string left, we specify our source string and then how many characters we want to extract from that and the name of the string we're gonna copy those into. Same thing for the right, except we're specifying how many characters we're gonna grab from the right end or the end of the string and copy into another string. And then with the mid, we not only have to specify how many characters we wanna extract, but also the starting position that we wanna extract it from, okay? Because it's not coming from the left or the right, it's coming from the middle. And that position that we specify is zero base. I've got it noted here. So that means if we specify five, it means the sixth position, okay, within the string. Okay, so let's go to our simulation mode and let's take a look at our results here. Again, having to go back to our string parsing section here. With this as our source string, if we extract three characters from the left, we get indeed one, two, three. Three characters from the right, we get four, five, six. And three characters from position number five, which is the sixth position, we get C, four, five. So position zero, one, two, three, four, five, that's the C, C45 for three consecutive characters to extract. Okay, so that is a demonstration of the parsing functions that are native to enhanced IEC that we've had to kind of create user-defined function blocks for variable-based advanced ladder and for standard IEC. Okay, let's take a look at our next enhanced IEC string handling functions. And these are string editing functions. So Certainly for the first three, the ability to delete characters, insert characters, or replace characters, we don't have a user-defined function block that we've created to do that function specifically. It could be done, but I haven't done it yet. But these are, again, native functions in enhanced IEC, along with a concatenation function, which, or we have replicated, if you will, using a user-defined function block. But basically, as you can tell from the name of these specific functions, they're used to either insert characters into a string, delete characters from a string, replace certain characters in a string with different characters, or to join multiple strings together. So that's what these string handling functions are all about. Let's go into Seascape and take a look at the syntax. All right, so string editing functions here. Let's go ahead and get out of our simulation mode, and let's take a look at our syntax. Okay, so 
With our delete characters syntax, our first input is going to be the string that we want to work on. Okay, and then effectively, what is the starting position that we want to start deleting from? And that starting position is zero based. So position zero is the first position. And then how many characters do we want to delete? So with this example I have on the screen here, we're going to delete the first three characters. Okay, next we have our insert function or insert characters function. And with this guy, very similar. Okay, except we start with the string that we're going to work on. The second input is the string or series of characters that we're going to insert in string data format. And then following after that is what position we want to insert those strings into. And again, it's a zero base position. And then finally with string replace, okay, the first input is the string we're working on. The second one is the string that we're going to insert into that original string. And then finally, we have to specify how many characters we're going to replace and at what starting position we're going to replace them in. All right, so quickly to simulation mode so we can take a look at the results here. And again, back to our screen editing after we hit that simulation button. And you can see here with this as our starting, our starting string, okay, if we're going to delete the first three characters, we do indeed end up with that result. If we're going to add three characters, all right, starting at position number three, then our A, B, C, D, E, F, where we're inserting one, two, three, we're going to end up with one, two, three being inserted at position three there in the middle. All right. And then, of course, replacing a string, you can see what that does here. Here's our starting string. Uh, here's the characters that are going to be replaced. And the end result here, after specifying the number of characters to replace in the starting character, location, that's the result we end up with. So you can see it's really quite easy with Enhanced IEC to do all kinds of string handling capabilities in your application. All right, just a couple more to review with you here of exclusive Enhanced IEC string functions. And that is, the next one is, next couple at least, string length. There are times you need to know how long a string is that you've received. Okay, you wanna calculate that length and you can use the string length function to do that. And then also, there are times when you want to compare strings. Now, one of the beauties of the string data type is you don't need a special function to compare two strings. Effectively, you can just use equality type coding to test whether two strings are matching or not, or if a string matches with a fixed set of characters, basically by using the kind of syntax that I'm showing here on the screen. So that's, again, one of the beauties of the string data type is sometimes you can just use this sort of coding and you don't need to use any special functions at all. Okay, so back to Seascape. Let's take a look at, um, oh, one thing I forgot to show you before. I also have an example down here on using concatenate. Let me go ahead and show you that real quickly before we show those other functions. With concatenate, you're just joining multiple strings. Now, what you can do, you can do this a couple different ways. You can use the string concat function where you just, put in list form separated by commas, the different strings that you want to join together. And there, there can be more than two, by the way. But you also don't have to use this function. You can use the plus function, for instance, and just with your different strings separated by the plus sign, you can also use that to join a whole series of strings together. And again, it doesn't have to be limited to just two strings that you're joining. Okay, I wanted to show you that concatenate and I forgot to, uh, to do that before we move back to the slides. Okay, but getting back to the last functions that I showed you, that is finding the length of a string. Okay, very simple syntax. Basically, you just specify the string in string type that you want to check the length of, and it will spit out the length as, I believe, an integer. I believe that's how it's gonna spit it out to us. Yeah, the output of the length of the string length function is an integer. Okay, something to keep in mind there. And then again, with the string compare logic, you can just use standard structured text syntax to see if a particular pair of strings happen to match. And if they do, you know, you can very easily write the sort of logic that tells you that. Okay, very good. So that is the string length and the string compare type capabilities that you could certainly want to use in a string handling type application. Okay. Next, let's talk about a couple other functions. Let's talk about string find, where you're going to try and find a series of characters in an original string and where that's located. 
And then another one called ASCII code or character ASCII code, where you want to specify the specific position within a string and you want to know what specifically that ASCII code is. Okay, those are you know scenarios you may need to use at some point. All right, so back to Seascape to take a look at the syntax. Here we are here. So here's our string find function where we start with the string that we're going to look inside as our first input. And then the second input is the series of characters in string form that we're looking for. Now, when we created user-defined function blocks for variable-based advanced ladder and for standard IEC, you could only find one specific character when you did a string find. With this built-in function, you can find a whole series of characters within another set, within original string. So that's very useful. And then the result or the output of this function is the position where that string is located, the one you're looking for. However, that is one based. Okay, so that output, that found position in my example here, that is one base, and I've made a note of it here. And then for the ASCII character code here, that character ASCII code function, very simple there. You simply specify the string where the character is located that you want the ASCII code for, and then the position within that string, zero based position, where you're going to find the character that you want to test or that you want to retrieve the ASCII code of. So in this case, the first character is character number zero, and then it spits out a result as a double integer. So I've again made a note there. Okay, one more quick function to show you and then we'll kind of wrap things up. Okay, the last one to show you, I don't think would be used all that often, but I didn't want to ignore it completely. And that is you do have the ability in Enhanced IEC to utilize a CRC calculation function that basically will calculate the Modbus CRC or it uses the same rules as Modbus to calculate the CRC but it calculates that Modbus CRC from a source string. So if you were building your own string, maybe you were talking to some device that uses a you know, non-standard version of Modbus and you need to build your own characters and things, you know, stranger things have happened, then you may need to calculate a CRC and you could use this function to do that. So that is certainly an option that's available here in Enhanced IEC. And I do have an example that I'm not gonna show you that's also in the structured text area for the demo program. Feel free to download that Seascape demo program if, if you think that would help you kind of understand the syntax a little bit better. Okay, so that wraps up what I wanted to cover with you today. So this is where I remind you that we're here every Tuesday at two o'clock with another topic, whether we're fully live like today or whether we are pre-recorded, maybe because of my travel schedule or some other reason, but we're always available. There's always somebody available to answer your questions if you're watching us live in the chat section. Give us those questions in the chat section on our YouTube channel, or if you're watching on replay, go ahead and give us those comments and questions in the comment section, and we'll get back to you quickly. Okay, if you want to interact with Horner online, maybe through our website, maybe through our YouTube channel, like I've talked about before, maybe you're active on LinkedIn and we certainly are, feel free to interact with us, to reach out to us through all these different outlets uh, online uh, so you can get the information you need from Horner Automation. Okay, so we've finalized our February topic schedule. I was a little bit slow this week because I was at the football game last week, but next week we're gonna be covering some new OCSIO modules that are available that are really gonna help expand the number of different applications where OCSIO can be used, specifically for higher density applications. So we've got that topic next week. Now, the other two topics in February, I think are gonna be very interesting. So we're gonna be covering something we've never covered before here on the channel, and that is we're going to blur the line a little bit between industrial automation and commercial applications and home automation because there may be some scenarios where you might wanna use a Horner OCS in what would traditionally be a commercial or a home environment, and you might wanna also take advantage of some of the components that are available for home automation. So we're gonna show you how to use Horner OCS in a HomeKit, Apple HomeKit type environment. So that should be very interesting. And I'm sure at some point we'll be covering the other standard automation, home automation platforms as well. And then finally, later in the month, we're gonna have a session where we talk about one of the biggest hot button topics in automation today, and that is AI or machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we've got some things, some really exciting things that we're working on at Horner in regards to these topics. 
And we're going to share some of those with you on this broadcast, which will be our last Tuesday live stream of the month. Okay. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, don't hesitate to do so. It doesn't cost anything. And if you choose to subscribe uh, and you choose notifications, you'll be notified every time we go live or every time we post a new video. Okay, so until next week when we talk OCSIO, let's all get out there and do us some good. Okay.